Good morning, everybody. My name is Jim Fergo. I'm the facilitator of the WorkNet DuPage Job Club, and I welcome you today to research, plan, and act will be our topic of discussion. Uh, please check out our website, worknetdupage.org. We are a job training organization uh, funded under the Workforce and Innovation and Opportunity Act, or the WIOA grant, as we are popularly called. We have a virtual job club every Friday at 9 a.m. And I will go over the topics coming up. Uh, next week, we have Megan Straza uh, from the Veterans Administration at Heinz talking about how to find a federal job. We have job search workshops for people who qualify for our program. Uh, the WIOA is a grant. You do need to qualify, so please go to our website to fill out the applications. And you can also sign up for uh, our job club. Uh, we do have training grants up to $10,000 for people who do qualify for the grant. Uh, everything from CDLA licenses uh, to the latest and greatest Microsoft and Cisco certifications, uh, medical assistant, patient care tech, Scrum Agile, uh, PMP. Uh, we do have a layoff to watch, layoff to launch workshop every Tuesday uh, at, let me see, it should be 9 a.m., I believe. It's a correction, 9.30 a.m. So you can go to our website, uh, and sign up directly through our website at worknetdupage.org, launch. Uh, we go over uh, what it takes uh, to qualify and then uh, the different types of training programs, how you can continue to receive unemployment while you are in training, and then also no need uh, to pay it back. Uh, I just want you to know uh, you'll probably see some other people responding uh, to questions during this presentation. Uh, certainly go to the Q&A and type your questions out. Uh, either myself or one of the others, uh, we have Amy Ulo. Uh, Good morning. Okay. Uh, she'll be sending out uh, a copy of the presentation slides. And then I have a couple of handouts in Word. Uh, some hand sheets that you can work on on your own after the presentation. Uh, once we are through and Zoom finishes uh, processing the recording, Amy will also be sending that out to everyone as well. Uh, we also have Javon Morris. Hello. And Jennifer Wegeman. Good morning. Uh, Jennifer and Javon are also trainers and uh, Jennifer will be doing some workshops coming up uh, next week and then uh, throughout June as well. So we have things going on throughout the week. I encourage you, if you are new, please go to our website, worknetdupage.org. Certainly come uh, attend on our meetings on Tuesdays at 9.30 for from layoff to launch. Okay, so let's start. So I'd say prior to March, job security was already being threatened by globalization automation and technology. But now with uh, the pandemic and the lockdowns, which hopefully we'll get out of soon, uh, this has also thrown a monkey wrench into the work area. Uh, two months ago, I had heard of something called Zoom. I thought that's what uh, Jets did when they went through the uh, air. Uh, however, here we are using Zoom. Uh, I think jobs will change in the future. I don't know if we can go back totally the way it was, but some jobs will and some won't. But we have to be aware that job security has been ripped apart. 
here we are now with our latest during the lockdown, our Zoom job search or the pajama job search. Here we are on the computer all day long. Uh, last week, our presenter, Connor Kaneen, talked about butitis, Zoom butitis, because uh, we're sitting all the time. And we're applying for jobs online. And here's what it looks like. Waiting. We wait for the responses. It's a reactive job search. And uh, one of the things I learned during my many job searches is you have to be proactive and get out before the jobs ever hit the public. So let's go over what's happening and how do you start. So I found this, uh, I combined two uh, thoughts, uh, Transitions by William Bridges, who says all new beginnings start with endings, and the time in between is called the neutral zone. And then the three boxes of life by Richard Bowles, who wrote uh, What Colors Your Parachute. And he goes with the four stages from what's happening to effectiveness. So let's talk about what's happening right now. And you can apply this to uh, the pandemic. You can apply it to starting a new job, having a, a new baby, uh, and things like that. So with endings, you have disengagement. You're pulled back. I know one of my sons has been furloughed. Uh, initially, he was in a job, and now he's totally uh, furloughed. He had to turn in his equipment. Hopefully, by Monday, he will have a, a position again. But at least they kind of sent him a, a little email that, yeah, you might be coming back. But as far as the work and the job, he's totally disengaged from the workplace and the people he is familiar with. <coughs> Excuse me. Next one is identification. You know when, uh, I'm sorry, when we uh, look around, uh, when we introduce ourselves, it's I'm the vice president of whatever. I'm a truck driver. I'm an executive admin assistant. Um, we identify, Americans, we identify who we are with our jobs. And now if you don't have a position, it's who are you? Well, you are someone. I'm Jim Fergal, whether I have a job or not. But I have other roles I play. Husband, father maybe active in my, in my community, uh, I've been a coach, you know, whatever it is, we have many roles other than the work role. But since most of our waking hours, from the time we get up, uh, having breakfast, the commute to and from, our time at work, and by the time we get home, uh, some people have spent anywhere from 10 to 14 hours at work. And our working hours are only uh, waking hours of maybe two or three with our family. So again, we're pulled out from the familiar and our identity has been ripped from us. The next thing is disenchantment. And I was kind of finding out about Santa Claus. Sorry, but we'll leave it like that. Don't want to blow anyone's mind too much. But you know, when you found out about Santa, woo, that was an eye opener. What's well, the same for work? You know, I, I was told if you work hard, keep your mouth shut, keep your nose down to the grindstone. People recognize you and you move on. I found it's not too. You get overlooked, uh, you know, and my reward uh, for doing that was getting laid off several times, uh, several of which were when I was uh, working for the Department of Employment Security or the Unemployment Office, getting laid off four or five times in two years. You know, I'm like, I thought this was a secure job. Employment security is in their job title, not for their staff. Then the next one is disorientation. You have been taken out of the familiar, your daily work routine, and you have been thrown into unfamiliar turf, the job search wilderness or unemployment land. And the other thing that's happened is now you are at home. And I mean, think about how the pandemic has affected normal. If you were laid off, you were, in, in, you were getting in the way of kids going to school, everything like that. Now the kids are at home. Uh, maybe uh, your spouse is trying to work. You're trying to do a job search. You got to homeschool. 
all of this is new, it's confusing. So let me go to Richard Bowles and the four steps uh, that he talks about on the boxes of life. The boxes of life are school, uh, work, and retirement. So the first thing, uh, and you can figure this out with the pandemic, is what's happening? What's going on? Uh, the same thing is now when you're operating out of home uh, and you're laid off. What do I have to do? Well, I'll go to the unemployment office except the unemployment offices, most of them, well, they're all closed, so you have to apply online. So then you get into survival mode. You, you wanna make sure you get your unemployment, try to na navigate that stream. And then you get a slap a resume together and then you're on Monster and Career Builder and Dice and Indeed, uh, waiting for jobs to appear that interest you. Uh, then you start getting calls from bizarre companies or recruiters that have found you online. Uh, maybe you've had a few interviews at some of these companies because you were desperate for a job and you found out some of these jobs didn't interest you. And so you start becoming more selective, looking for positions that have meaning and mission because uh, you've taken the time to do assessment, which we'll talk about today. And you say, you know what? I would really like to do this at this stage of my life or I'd like to continue on. Uh, with my career path. And then you become much more effective. Uh, if you've attended any of our uh, virtual job clubs, we've talked about uh, applicant tracking systems, we've talked about uh, in the interview process, resumes, things like that. So you start put, putting together a more effective resume than just the generic one that gets out there. And then hopefully you start a new uh, job or you get called back to your old one but it's a new beginning again. Now you get back to what's happening in the new job or what's happening back at uh, your old new place of work and how things go. So there's a book, uh, I'm gonna be doing this workshop at the end of June, uh, Knowledge Nomads and the Nervously Employed. The nervously employed, uh, you know, we work eight to five, 7.30 to five, uh, something like that. We have regular hours. Uh, we've been groomed that you're gonna have wages that match your age. Uh, you have specific job descriptions. This is your job description, this is what you'll work. There's a straight promotional ladder. You could follow it, you knew what was happening. There's livable wages and you had a retirement and a pension. <laughs> right? <laughs> it was the illusion of security and being in control. There's, and as I mentioned earlier, there's all these factors that you have no control over. Globalization, technology, and now the pandemic. So the old job search was to get 500 resumes, the exact same resume printed. You sent it to the, uh, uh, the same resume to all the employers. Uh, and then you waited for a response. I, I saw an illustration of job search in the uh, 70s and 80s. It was just one, one little box. But now the whole game has changed and there's like 20 different boxes on how to conduct a job search in the 21st century. Uh, tailoring resumes, uh, being on social media, all these interview questions, being mobile, things like that. So the new world of uh, job search and of work is flexibility. Uh, you're still being accountable. I, I know uh, at home I have to uh, put in uh, my remote work logs of what I'm doing. I'm still uh, working with internal and external customers, except I'm doing it remotely uh, by Zoom or Microsoft meetings. The nice thing is you can work anytime from anywhere. Uh, we're more collaborative, I found, uh, in this uh, Zoom environment. You know, before the meeting, I have my laptop open and I'm communicating uh, with Amy and Javon uh, on Teams on my phone. Uh, multifaceted, you're gonna do a lot of different jobs and, and a more rapid response. So work is not a place you go to, but a thing that you do. You know, uh, it's kind of interesting when Cranes uh, the other day was talking about, 
all the vacant open space, and then they're talking about new buildings going up for office space. Uh, I don't know, you have this contradictions going on. So people ask me to predict the future for them. Uh, I was just talking with some recruiters this week, ask them what they think. And it's all kind of like this crystal ball. It's all kind of fuzzy. Um, who knows? Uh, I used to have a crystal ball in my office that my staff gave me for Halloween. Uh, I remember a job seeker said, gosh, I hope this resume gets me to the job. You know, and I said, well, let's see what happens. I shook the stand with the crystal ball on it. It flew off and shattered. Hopefully that wasn't a premonition of her job search. But you know, you can't rely on crystal balls to predict. Life is a risk. And there's a lot of times, no matter how much you interview and ask questions, you really don't know much about the company and the personalities until the first couple of days of work and they show you where the coffee pot is. Now the other thing that I found, especially working for the unemployment office, is the unemployment numbers that come out and uh, and then how they get rewritten a couple months later. There's a pendulum that's constantly swinging uh, between a shortage of workers and a surplus of jobs, surplus of workers and shortage of jobs. Right now, because so many people have been laid off from the pandemic, there's a lot of workers and supposedly a shortage of jobs. Uh, on the other hand, you have a shortage of workers when the economy was really good, like five months ago, and a surplus of jobs. So the thing I want you to know is that the numbers that you see generally could be a couple of weeks old to even a couple months old. Just depends. By the time everything filters up from organizations like us, uh, we have to report how many people have gotten jobs, the type of jobs, salaries, and then the unemployment office and other uh, workforce development organizations, by the time, and plus employer taxes. By the time all that gets reported by D DOL, uh, they throw a little incense on it, pull out their crystal ball, they make a prediction on jobs up or down. But while this is going back and forth, you know, right now we can say there's a surplus of worker and shortage of jobs. Companies are, are still advertising uh, and people are interviewing for jobs right now. So what we're gonna be talking about today uh, is we're gonna have to look at things differently. So we're gonna go into research, and the first thing I wanna start with is, okay, we've heard this, especially with Illinois, all businesses are leaving, all jobs are going to wherever, no one's gonna hire me because there are no jobs and the pandemic is eliminating every job available. Okay, not all jobs are leaving Illinois. Uh, I encourage you to read Cranes and the Business Ledger uh, you'll see those later on throughout the presentation. You know, local newspapers, uh, look at websites. Uh, there's stuff happening. Uh, ironically, what are we trying to do is bring all the jobs back from China so that we become self-sufficient. Uh, no one will hire me because I'm too old, too young, overqualified, underqualified, whatever. Um, whatever you throw out there, there's some person uh, who has the opposite problem. And if you look at it, there's 30 million employers out there. You're gonna tell me that, you know, if you're 62, that no one's gonna hire you out of 30 million employers. It's just you haven't looked in the right places. And this is gonna take time. There are no jobs. Now well, we're seeing people getting interviews, getting hired, uh, and also jobs are coming in to us as well. So I encourage you to look on our website for jobs. So <clears throat> you have to change your perspective on things. And this is what I learned uh, when I did recruiting during one of my layoffs from unemployment. Uh, the guy, it was the middle of a recession, which is even more weird about getting laid off from the unemployment office. Lines were out the door, I get laid off. Uh, I still had to fill out an application, but worked the whole day. 
uh, go do recruiting and the guy's telling me all these possibilities and opportunities out there. I said, you gotta be crazy. All these major corporations are laying off. Unemployment lines are out the door. <clears throat> and he said, the reason that you have this problem is that you are focusing on the unemployment numbers because that's the environment you were in. But now you're in the recruiting environment and rather than looking at how bad things are, you have to look for what opportunities are out there because employers are hiring all the time. Even back in 2008 to 2010, when lines were out the door at our office, uh, the asbestos industry, uh, dirty, nasty business, have to have certifications, were paying top dollar for people. They couldn't find enough people. So even in the midst of um, the hurricane, if you will, there are places of calm uh, of people hiring. So the phases of the job search, uh, well, we have to get into analysis. You have to be able to talk about yourself and what you're looking for. You have to investigate, uh, which is rather than just applying on anything you see online, is I would say, you know, and you'll see this in some of the bibliography coming up, is target companies you want to work for. Orchestrate all of the resources that you have uh, towards that goal. And then finally, uh, we have uncover. And that means uh, there's a lot of hidden job openings in the newspaper every day or online companies announcing that they're hiring, and sometimes even in Cranes and uh, Business Ledger, they even talk about what positions they're hiring for. So we start off with your vision, and it's a combination of what you know now and your dreams. And it's kind of like time travel. You know, you go out in the future, say, well, this is where I want to be, uh, but then you come back to the present, but you have to figure out what are the steps to get me to where I want to be? You know, your goals. So some questions you want to ask, what do you want? What type of position do you want? Where do you want to work? How big of a company? How small of a company? Products, services, what uh, skills do you want to use? What actions do you need to take? And how do you know when you get there? And what's going to be your message that you can talk to people uh, that you are networking with or making connections with or even in the interview. Right now, some of you are at this crossroads. Um, maybe you want to stay in the same occupation. Maybe you're looking at doing contract and gig work. I just got a email from a former job seeker. I've uh, been laid off several times and now he's looking at the gig economy. Uh, flexjobs.com is what he was talking about. And uh, I think you have to pay a fee to be a member of that, but flexjobs.com. The other thing is considering a career change. Maybe uh, you threw out your back and can't be lifting patients or over the road anymore. So you have to think about other possibilities. So our visions of future positions is, we look at the assessment of yourself, there's personality assessments, there's skills. I'm gonna give you a bunch of websites to look at here. Look at your talents, what are you good at? What do people say, wow, they're natural at this. What are your interests? Uh, I, I remember teaching a group uh, of welfare to work people and they all said they were looking in, uh, factories and warehouses for jobs. Well, they're all women, they all had nice nails, and I could tell by their faces it didn't energize them. But when I asked them, if you were in the Garden of Eden, didn't have any worries, what would you like to do? You know, one wanted to be a floral designer, another one wanted to be a landscape uh, scaper, another one wanted to work with her mom designing dresses. So, but I could watch their whole body language change. So if you know what interests you, find something in that industry uh, that you can contribute. I remember an accountant telling me, uh, he said, well, I like race cars. Should I be a race car driver? 
No, but race car drivers, you know, have teams of support uh, and uh, probably accountants to do the books and things like that. So if you're interested in NASCAR, start uh, looking at NASCAR and hanging out at NASCAR, uh, you know, events. Talk to people. Okay, as far as preparation and planning, yeah, you got to get a resume together. You have a main resume. And I'll tell you this now, you're going to have a resume for the applicant tracking system and then a pretty resume for interviews. And they're two different things. Uh, attend our workshops and, and you'll find out about that or look at our previous uh, videos uh, on applicant tracking systems. LinkedIn profiles. I was talking with a recruiter the other day. His applicant tracking system not only takes in uh, the resumes, but he says it inhales the whole LinkedIn profile. Uh, it's like, wow, you know, the recruiters, you know, online and companies pay. Uh, so you want your LinkedIn profile to talk about what you do. Do your research. What industry you want to work in, what type of position, location, are you willing to move or relocate? Make sure you employ social media and come up with a plan. Develop a schedule. We'll talk about all this. Have tracking tools. Network. I know some people say, oh, I hate to network. Guess what? The, jo the whole job search is going to be focused on networking because you you will find most positions, over 70% of positions are found by being known, by being referred into companies rather than on the internet. There's workshops, there's job clubs out there. Uh, you have information interviews if you're considering a new uh, company or new occupation. There's job boards. You have interview prep. We've talked about that in some of the workshops, different interviews. And then when you get the job offer, being able to negotiate about it, you got to onboard, restore family routines. And then uh, one of the things I've seen with some of the uh, salespeople, uh, one of my son's uh, compatriots, uh, when she was interviewing for a new job, she had to come up with a 30, 60, 90 day plan of the, what she was going to do on the new job. So you might want to do that as well when you get a new position. Okay, focus on the benefits of hiring you. Uh, it's interesting that a lot of people focus on why I'm not going to get a job. Uh, and, and I really don't want you to go there. Uh, I want you to start thinking about why they should hire you. But you have to understand this basic formula here. Employers have a need, you have to fit the need, establish some chemistry uh, in order to get the job offer. All righty? That's what you're going to have to do. Uh, and I want you to think of the job opening as a weakness for the employer. Those of you who have done hiring, know that the longer a position goes unfilled, the uh, more stress there is on other people picking up the slack, as, and, and then also as far as uh, uh, customer service starts to suffer. So the other thing I, I want you to uh, talk about is looking at, in order to fit the need is you have to understand the job description, what do they want you to do, and then, Look at your experiences. And then the two things the employer cares about is how have you solved problems and how have you made or saved money for the company? Because when you talk in those terms, you are talking of interest to them. You're focused on them and that establishes chemistry. So we have to look at the past and find clues. You know, it's like you're driving down the road and we have a tendency to look in our rear view mirror for jobs because that's what we know. Um, and, and for some of us, uh, the old jobs are gone. They're dead, they're not there. So we have to look in the future. But you do look in the past to look for threads, as I say, that link all your different experiences and 
that gives you an idea. Uh, this is why I like what colors your parachute is working out the exercise as you find out what your top 10 skills are that you have used throughout your life from school, from teams to uh, different jobs and things like that. So you write out seven to 10 success stories. You identify skills. You find common skills that you use throughout. Look for moments of flow. All right, timelessness. You know, uh, I was putting together uh, this presentation and, you know, in between meetings and it was just like, time was flying by. You know, you, you get into those zones. And I want you to think about when were those zones of flow because that's what you're doing, what you enjoy, and what you're great at. The feeling is important as well. You want to find that feeling. Uh, also look at what you disliked or liked about the event or the job. And always what have you learned? I've had several jobs that I've hated, but I learned stuff that I use to this day. So in, in the handout uh, that you have, you should have your work history. Uh, you should fill out a sheet for each company uh, and each, and I would say each position in the company if you've had several. Uh, you have your likes and dislikes. Do you want, what's the size of the organization? Do you like the product, the service? What are the work tasks, the duties, working conditions, people, management style? The location, you know, uh, and, and, you know, staff. If some of you were supervisors, managers, executives, did you have, uh, were you on one location or did you uh, had one guy who was traveling to six continents, uh, but not Antarctica? You know, so write this stuff down. Uh, what invigorates you? See, because as you work through all this and you have these different sheets, you start putting, putting together your resume, your work history. And I, I know this sounds weird, uh, but you want to be able to pr prioritize your search. You know, why, why be like the ladies in, in the uh, welfare to work uh, workshop that were looking in places that they hated those jobs? Look for places, you know, in target companies that you want to work at. I also put in, a, uh, in the handout your SWAT, strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. Internally, you look at your strengths, your skill set, your education, your certifications. These are things you have under your control. And your weaknesses are areas that, eh, you know, maybe I can go back to school. Maybe I can take some online courses. Uh, opportunities in your field. Uh, you, the external, what opportunities are out there? Uh, like I learned uh, doing recruiting is there's always possibilities out there. Uh, companies are hiring. It's just you don't hear about it as much. Uh, it all depends on what's being reported. So you have to do a deep dive under the surface. And then there's threat, negative conditions you cannot control, the pandemic, the lockdowns, uh, technology, robotics, these things you can't control, but you can learn robotics. The question uh, came up is how far back do you go? Uh, I went all the way back to high school writing out uh, <laughs> summer jobs. Uh, you know, that's part of what caused your parachute. But on your resume, uh, last 10 to 15 years is really what's most significant. I don't think we need to go back to uh, the disco ball era uh, and even farther back to the summer of love back in the 60s. You don't need to go that far. Uh, they're more concerned about what have you done recently. Now, job success, and I found this interesting. Uh, it's from the Carnegie Foundation and Stanford Research Center, as well as Harvard. 85% of job success comes from soft skills and people skills. And only 15% comes from technical knowledge. And, you know, I've had people argue with me, and I'm like, yeah, okay, technical knowledge. Well, two months ago, I didn't know Zoom. I told you that. And now I'm Zooming all over the place. Technical knowledge can be taught and readily grasped. 
how you interact with people, and that's the tough part. Uh, I, I remember uh, a field technician interviewing at, at a company, he talked with uh, the owner of the company for like an hour and a half. Not once did they talk about the job. They talked about uh, sports, they talked about what was going on with the economy, all sorts of things. The guy, the field technician said to the owner, you haven't asked me once about my skill set. He said, I don't care about your skill set. I can teach you that. I want to make sure when you're in front of my customers, you're not going to alienate them. And I wanted to see how well you can interact and talk with people. Wow. Different, huh? So for those of you who say, okay, what skills do I need? IllinoisWorkNet.com uh, has uh, skills and interest inventories, work environment inventories, all for free. Career One Stop, Career Key, these are uh, career assessments, interest inventories. Uh, we have Job, Job Talk, TheBalance.com, uh, Job Hunters Bible. Uh, has a list of assessments and things like that. So these are all cool things uh, you can look at. I'm not going to go into detail because you can explore them. I go with the big four-letter F word, free, F-R-E-E. -E. There's others I could give you that you have to pay for, but go with free for right now. Three main types of skills. You have job or work content skills the types of machines you've worked with, the software, uh, tools, functions, languages, programming languages, and then even your foreign languages. You know, I had a lady who uh, was an administrative assistant uh, and she said she couldn't find a job, but she was trilingual. I said, well, what languages do you speak? She said, well, I speak uh, English, Italian, and Spanish. I said, oh my gosh, all you gotta do is drive up 83 or go to West Chicago, park the car, and by noon you should have a, a position. <clears throat> but she wasn't putting that on her resume at all. Transferable skills mean no matter what the job is, uh, this is what they're, whether you're a doctor or a construction worker, you need a good attitude, you have to be able to communicate, problem solve, work as part of a team, you only got so much time to do uh, the job in. And customer service is not only external, but internal as well. And then having a good work ethic. Some of the personality traits are assertiveness, um, creative, precise, resourceful, tenacious. It all depends on the job, you know. Some people, uh, I've seen aggressive. Um, well, it depends on the job. I've seen some jobs for sales reps where aggressive hunter type of mentality is uh, required for that type of job. Um, others, aggressive might be too overwhelming if you're in the social service arena. <laughs> so, excuse me, again, what makes you unique in the workplace? You know, this, you're going to have to separate yourself out from the crowd. What are your top three to five skills, uh, traits, talents at work? Are you very creative? Can you fix anything? Are you the go-to person, the SME, the subject matter expert? And what are you passionate about going here, doing? Here we go back to flow. And what do you do well? Some career questions. Uh, there's three main areas, agriculture, manufacturing, information, and service. Uh, agriculture obviously can be working on a farm, uh, but even as part of agriculture, one of my uh, former trainers, his family owned a big farm in Iowa. Well, they also had to look at things, data, and people, machinery, animals, uh, now they have GPSs on their tractors. It can analyze the yield of the uh, uh, crops that were planted that year, the mineral contents. Um, and then also people, dealing with people, uh, making sure that they pick up your crops or looking at the, uh, the stock market and things like that. Fields of knowledge, what are you an expert at? 
uh, whether it's the medical industry, the tech industry. I knew someone from Lucent years ago. Okay, Alcatel, Lucent, Nokia. Uh, and he said, I'm always trying to stay one step ahead of all the layoffs uh, because he brought a bunch of uh, tech magazines and, and books to read uh, on the weekend retreat we were on. There's different preparation times. Some jobs you can walk right into, uh, some you need a certification or uh, a bachelor's, master's, PhD, doctorate, whatever. So you have to look at how, what can you commit to. There's different kinds of workplaces. Now, a lot of us are working remote or are doing remote job search. Uh, there's also working in a fast paced environment such as a, a restaurant or a factory. Uh, maybe it's inside a nice comfortable office or maybe it's outside working on a construction crew. Or I met a couple people who work for the Forest Preserve. I said, well, that's gotta be nice when you're out in nature. They said, it's great, except when it's 30 below or 100 degrees uh, with a high humidity. I said, "Well, oh, okay. Uh, prescribed or discretionary? Prescribed means, okay, when you come in, you know, like on assembly line, this is your place, you're gonna be putting uh, tops on aerosol cans for the next eight hours, okay? It's like they tell you what you're going to do. Discretionary is uh, where you, you know, like today, you know, I, I like, okay, what do I need to do today? Okay, well, open up my emails, check my emails, get this uh, presentation up. You know, I decide what's important in the context of the organization. Here's something I uh, ran across about two years ago. Uh, companies are starting returnship programs uh, for stay at home moms. Uh, and, and these are just some of them. We've had uh, one or two people come through that actually, uh, I think one even went to Northrop Grumman uh, and a couple, and there's more out there than this. So I uh, look at returnship programs and also for you young workers over uh, 55, check out Encore Careers, Encore.org and ARP. Uh, they have excellent, uh, books and articles on what's your next gig, what's your next phase of life, and things like that. A question came up is, can you have two separate uh, LinkedIn profiles? And you have uh, different opportunities. Uh, that's a tough one. Usually you can, uh, I, I would just say you could have two and just say these are the two fields. Um, what's comfortable with you? How are you gonna get found? Again, uh, when you're looking at opportunities and doing LinkedIn, uh, keywords are gonna be what's important. You can have keywords in the fields. In your summary, you can say, well, this is one area I'm, I'm an expert in, and this is the other area. Uh, career exploration, you have Bureau of Labor Statistics. They have Occupational Outlook Handbook as well as uh, ONET. Uh, they tell you, they describe occupations and they also have uh, skills assessments. Illinois WorkNet, the same. You can find training, you can find careers, assessments, wage trends. Career One Stop has uh, interest inventories. My Next Move, you know, and then also what keywords are. Salary negotiations, okay? Here's some resources. Uh, you can go to the Bureau of Labor Statistics. Uh, PayScale has, uh, it's free. They have salary negotiating guides. Also, they tell you what the latest, you know, pay is happening in the areas. Illinois WorkNet, uh, Educate to Careers, Job Search Intelligence, Salary Calculator. Salary.com gives you basic. You have to pay for more specific. Again, pay scale. Harvard Law School. You can get free. Uh, you sign up for free and they have articles on negotiation, even job search. PON.harvard.edu. A couple books here is Get Paid What You're Worth, Pinkley and Northcraft. Northcraft, I like that. Salary Tutor by Jim Hopkinson. Uh, 
you can go to salarytutor.com. But in the book, uh, it has conversations broken down and color coded by red for the evil HR person and blue for the job seeker, but also how to have different salary expectations depending on the position you're going for. Everything's negotiable when you know how to play the game. Uh, friendly Persuasion by Bob Wolf. I ran across this when going through my job search. Uh, and he this was probably from the 80s or 90s. He negotiated for Larry King, Larry Bird, New Kids on the Street. But he broke down the negotiating process into before, during, and after steps. Real easy to read. Things you don't think about that you do unconsciously. Real easy book to read if you find it. Another thing is lifelong learning. Uh, again, we owe a programs, uh, WorkNet DuPage. Uh, we do have training grants. Uh, the community colleges, adult education, um, sometimes depending on your age of maturity, sometimes you can audit classes for free. There's internships, returnships, on the job training. We're working with employers on that. And then you have Linda, Coursera. Now, uh, I think it was a couple a week ago, two weeks ago, Governor Pritzker talked about uh, Coursera going to have some uh, free classes. Uh, check out IllinoisWorkNet.com. Uh, that will be the portal to get these free courses on Coursera, uh, probably starting about 1 June. And any courses you start, uh, they should be for free. Uh, I have very sketchy info. There, there's nothing concrete uh, as of yesterday evening. Uh, but you want to keep an eye on this, IllinoisWorkNet.com, uh, and check out, because there will be bulletins that come out on this. So planning. Buy a planner, OK? Uh, just something so you can track your progress. Schedule your week, your day, your month. Um, you know, my job search used to be looking around, uh, maybe on my desk and seeing, oh, Pepsi. I think I'll apply a Pepsi today. And then I read somewhere that Pepsi's laying off and it's just like, oh no, what am I gonna do the rest of the day? Uh, what I learned in recruiting is plan the night before on what you're gonna do the next day. So that when you wake up, you have your energy going, you know what you do, you know what to focus on. Uh, and this can be, uh, and I'll show you an example in a little bit. Uh, of course, research yourself, the trends, industries. Time on the internet. Ugh. You have to, your phone has timers. Uh, and now with some of these applicant tracking systems and tailoring your resume, it's going to take time. So set a timer. Uh, if you're in the job search mode where you're just looking for opportunities, set the timer because invariably after about a half hour, you're in some bizarre website and you're trying to figure out how I got there. Uh, your social media, get your LinkedIn up to speed. Uh, you know, have, have a little bit more than what the work, you know, the title of the company is in your job. Show people what you've done. Uh, Facebook can be used. I had a, a CPA who had his own company. Uh, he had sold it off and was looking to help a new startup. On a Friday, he put on Facebook, hey, you know, you know, to his friends, I'm looking for a startup that I could help. And uh, it turned out uh, one of his friends contacted him over the weekend, and he uh, wound up having a conversation with a startup interviewed face-to-face -face on Tuesday. By Wednesday, he had a job. Someone brought up, uh, yeah, many libraries have free access to uh, lynda.com, uh, part of LinkedIn. Uh, I don't know how you contact your library, see if they're open, see if there's a link, but usually with your library card, uh, you can access either that and some of the databases that are available. Uh, reach out to people, even more so now as we become isolated. Uh, talking to people on the phone or Zooming is becoming popular. 
There's all different levels of interviews, informational, first, second, third. Figuring out your wants and needs, tangibles and tangibles. You gotta do that in the research mode. And then follow up. One woman said it took her two or three times uh, within a couple of weeks at, uh, for one of the local villages. She followed up to see where they were in the process. And it was only through her follow up that uh, she got the job. So here's a, an example of planning your day. If you're an early bird, <clears throat> going to the gym. I found during my layoffs, I went to the gym early uh, because that meant I started the day with a couple positives. One, I stood up and I was breathing. Uh, two, I actually made it out the door and got to the gym. And three, jumping in the water to do some swimming uh, at oh dark 30 in the morning is quite eye-opening but afterwards I knew that I had completed a couple things that I had some success maybe I swam an extra length or a couple lengths you know so I even when nothing was happening at least I knew in my mind I was accomplishing something as far as exercise set time when you're going to do online research set time when you're going to schedule uh, attend workshops whether they're virtual or in person when we go back to that. Um, if you know you have an interview coming up, like on Tuesday at 1 uh, p.m. here, well, the day before, what do you need to do? And probably you need to have clothes in the cleaner before that even. Uh, and, and then also follow up. You know, after the interview, take your clothes to the cleaner. It's little things like this, but you want to get a schedule going. Nighttime. Um, I'll be presenting at Compass Church on uh, Career Ronin, uh, June 9th. Uh, softball games uh, or they, any athletic event you participate in, the team, good place to network. Or if you're at uh, Little League games with your kids on the weekend. Uh, I remember working the stand with some guy who said, boy, I'd like to own a little hot dog stand like this. You know, he was an entrepreneur. He, he was going to buy it. I guess. Uh, go to job clubs. Uh, if you're going out for dinner with friends, sometimes I found when I went to dinner with friends uh, that I hadn't seen in a while, it was kind of like interviewing because they said, well, how are you? What have you been doing? And so you kind of go through what you've been doing. It's just like, well, this is kind of like an interview. So what I've done is I've uh, given you some tracking activities. Uh, how you set it up, a lot of people use Excel spreadsheets. I have a, a monthly activity, uh, what my goals were for every day. It's something similar to what I used in recruiting, how many cold calls, how many networking calls, uh, how many face-to-face -face interviews, phone interviews. It just helps you track your activity and also gives you goals. Okay, I gotta get so many interviews. And the more interviews you have, the closer you are to the, getting a job. I remember years ago I had a, job seeker, uh, two stories with him. Uh, he was getting a lot of rejection in the first interview because they said, well, we can't afford your salary because uh, he was in his six figures. But he always, and here's a nice question to ask when they say, well, you're overqualified. Where else in the company do you think they could use my talent and skills? He was generating a lot of second and third interviews that way. I'll say it again. Where else in the company do you think you could use my talent and skills? Because sometimes the position you're interviewing for is not going to be a good match. But there's others you don't know about. And the other thing was he stopped in at lunch and he says, man, do I have a busy week. I have 10 interviews. Every day, morning and afternoon, he had interviews going. So the more activity you have, the closer you are to landing a position. I've already talked about uh, LinkedIn uh, somewhat here. Um, and, I, and I'm gonna say this because a lot of people forget. If you're using your phone, it gives you an automatic, uh, I'd like you to be part of my LinkedIn. Uh, I think it's got three dots uh, that you have to go in to connect. Make a personal message. How do I know you? If you wanna link in with me, 
which you're all free to do, is send me a personal message. Jim, I was at your uh, webinar today on Research, Plan, and Act. I'd like to be part of your professional network. Well, great, that's how I know you. Rather than out of the blue, because I don't know who this, you know, I had, uh, all of it in the last two weeks, I've had people from India uh, trying to link in with me. Uh, and then also uh, one or two scams. Uh, but I've also had recruiters who have been on the, the webinars, you know, Texas or wherever, and say, hey, I was at your webinar. So I want to know who you are before I connect. And this is why you want to send personal messages before you hit connect. If you hit the connect, it sends out automatic, followed up with, oops, sorry. Uh, I want you to be part of my network because. Why should we link in? Then you have Facebook. Uh, use Facebook, let your friends know. They have people in companies. Uh, they all work. They, you know, my younger son got my older son in at his uh, company. Twitter, you don't have to tweet. All you have to do is follow companies. Uh, they usually post jobs on there and also any news about the company. Uh, you're not limited uh, to just corporate. There's freelance, gig economy. Uh, some of you are in, more in the contract mode now or, you know, taking a gig. Depends where you're at in your career and life. Nonprofits, you know, people overlook them. Well, usually a lot of nonprofits uh, have um, mainly fundraising, but they also have accountants. They also have uh, human resources, especially your larger nonprofits. Uh, volunteering. I had one lady, uh, she was volunteering with this green industry. Uh, nonprofit that she wanted to get into because she had volunteered for them years ago. Eventually they said, Hey, you know, why don't you, we got a position available that was never published. Maybe you're thinking of starting your own company. Uh, their small business has administration has a lot of information on that. The military, if you're young enough, although I just read about a guy who was in his fifties who maxed the uh, PT test, uh, over all the younger kids. Um, that's kind of interesting. Government. You have your local government. Uh, one of my uh, older staff from uh, the area on aging uh, got a part-time job with the village of Lyle uh, for somewhere between $14 and $15 an hour. So check out where you live first, uh, your, your city, your village. Then you have townships, you have county, uh, counties hiring, you have um, state positions, and then you also have federal jobs, which we'll be talking about next week. Education is not just teachers. I've had several IT network administrators get hired by school districts. Uh, you have uh, maintenance, facilities, security, again, accounting uh, and admin assistance. So targeting companies. Uh, this is from a book, The Two-Hour Job Search by Steve Dalton. It's in the bibliography. Uh, the Two-Hour Job Search talks about there's 30 million companies in the U.S. 99.9% .9 have less than 500 employees. 99% have fewer than 100 employees. Yet what's the first thing we all look at? Are those with 100 plus. Okay, I want to work at Nestle. I want to work at uh, Navistar. I want to work at McDonald's because of branding. But they account for less than 25% of all the jobs. And there's also tougher competition. Almost two thirds or more of all jobs are companies between two and 99 employees. Smaller companies. You have less competition and they're more willing to go with uh, good enough. Okay. I was working with Serenity House with recovering addicts uh, last year, and uh, a lot of them were like, "Well, how am I going to, you know, get a job?" Because I, well, most of them had some sort of record, uh, and yet they would go door to door, and based on their 
mechanical background or, or whatever. This one guy said uh, he was interviewed by the owner of the manufacturing uh, facility, taken on a tour. Uh, he looked at his electrical and automotive background and the owner says to this guy, uh, well, what are you looking for? He says, well, I was looking at minimum wage, eight, nine bucks an hour. The guy says, heck no, I'm looking at 18. You see, but because he, he, he was a recovering addict and had a background, he thought he didn't deserve more. And here was an employer willing to do it. So if you feel you have things in your background, uh, go door to door. Uh, and uh, old job search. A lot of these uh, small employers don't have these intricate applicant tracking systems. Uh, I had a young kid who uh, finished uh, and got a lot of certifications in IT. He went door to door. Uh, even some of the, the receptionists and companies said, thanks for dropping off your resume. Uh, whoever says that? And, and then he generated two interviews out of it. Identify people. So uh, the job search, uh, the two-hour job search book talks about 40 employers. It's more than 10 because the top 10 are usually the biggest ones. Uh, there's some good strategies in the two-hour job search because it also talks about how to use Wikipedia to find companies and people. Uh, but you can use LinkedIn to research companies and find connections there. You can use LinkedIn to make connections or your social media to get a referral to someone in, in the company. Ask if there's employee referral programs. People get $500, $1,000, $2,000. Uh, even recently, I've, I've seen some being advertised. And the reason why you want referrals is you're gonna stand a better percentage of getting interviews and then hired as well. They say one referral is worth 75 online applications. That was from Career Crossroads. And also you're more likely to stay. So when you're looking at companies, uh, are you looking for a job or a company? We all try to fit into jobs. But here's an alternative way of looking at things is look for an opportunity. Look for a problem uh, that needs to be solved. And that's why you want to read the news, okay? What companies have a problem like that? How can you help them turn around? All companies have problems. How are you going to be a solution to their problem? Look behind the doors for possibilities that are out there. Uh, new companies coming in, uh, new products being developed, companies expanding management changes. I was just reading that yesterday. People getting promoted. Here's how one guy got into United years ago. Um, he came in, he said, no one's going to hire me because I'm 50. I'm too old. Uh, I said, okay. Uh, he had worked for United and Continental and uh, Air Freight. And he saw somebody get a job. Uh, it was in, you know, who's, you know, the uppity, uppity, uh, senior level. There was an article in the Trib about some guy getting promoted to director of logistics for um, United. So after this uh, guy attended uh, the workshops, he says, you know, I'm going to go out on a limb. And he called the guy. He found out what the guy's phone number was, called him and said, I want to congratulate you on your promotion to director of freight. He says, wow, thank you. How'd you hear about it? He says, oh, it was in the Trib. Beautiful article. They have a nice picture of you. He says, well, thank you. Who are you? He says, my name is Kay. I uh, work for United and Continental with Air Freight. I worked the tower during 9-11. And next thing you know, uh, the director says, okay, I want to see your resume. Uh, send it to me, but I also want you to contact the human resource manager, this is her name, and tell her, I want to talk with you. Next thing I know, he's going through uh, several interviews and uh, drug testing and wound up getting hired there just because he did something different. You can find this information on uh, Business Ledger. Here, I'm going to show you. 
You can use A to Z databases or Reference USA. Again, your libraries have access and we have access as well. These are paid subscriptions. Here, Business News, Inc., Fast Company, they tell you what the trends are. Fortune, here's Business Ledger, it's local. It talks about Northwest suburbs, Northern suburbs, West, who's moving in, who's expanding, who's closing. They highlight CEOs, presidents of company for coffee break. What's the trend? Well, we're gonna hire. These are the positions we're hiring for. Right there, there's a job ad. Cranes talks about uh, companies moving in. Uh, they, they talk about when uh, re renovating the loop, uh, the old offices were being renovated and they talked about the new tech companies moving in there because it was less expensive than River North. But they list the companies and they say, we have to expand because we need, we're gonna be doing hiring. Well, look up the company. Uh, Industry Week. If you're in supply chain manufacturing, they talk about the Internet of Things and what's going on. Tech Republic for all you techies. Uh, for, these are all free. Uh, this is how I learn about uh, the tech industry. What are the top uh, tech programming languages this year? Um, you know, whatever. Uh, Workforce.com. It's for human resources. These are all free. Industry guides, uh, uh, manufacturing directories. Th this is A to Z databases in book form. Your professional associations, organizations, uh, and company websites. So action is every day you need courage because you're gonna face no. You need confidence in yourself because uh, if you don't believe in yourself, who else will? change your perception of the job market. You need perseverance. You know, the uh, half marathon is 13.1 miles. The full marathon is 26.2. How long is the job search? Until you get a job. So you have to persevere. You're gonna have ups and downs. Use the resources that are available right now and resiliency is bouncing back. Again, schedule your day. Exercise. Time for you is important as well. Attend workshops. After interviews or any event, pin. Positive, interesting, negative. Uh, find people who will support you. Here's a key one. Ask for help. Attend job clubs and support groups. Keep a journal for yourself and surround yourself with positive influences. Here's what I was talking about. About 5% of the jobs are created for people. 25% of the people get hired from the applicant pool and that may be high. Uh, being a known candidate, 70% of people get hired that way. And I'll just go over the applicant funnel for a, a little bit. Uh, <clears throat> It's like making sausage. All of these components are going into human resources. Unsolicited resumes, online applications, people they've already interviewed, uh, but think, well, maybe this is a better fit. Uh, you have referred resumes, solicited resumes, recruiters, all sending resumes in, and then they turn the crank and a few people come out, generated interest. So if a human resource manager, his morning going for coffee, he gets hit, hit up the moment he steps out of his office by everyone, hey, my spouse got laid off, oh, I just got my certification, just got my degree, I got my MBA, and they're all handing him resumes, or her, on the way to get coffee and on the way back. When he's looking to fill open positions, he is or she is not looking here at online applications, they're looking at the referred because they trust those people. When you are referred, that sets you higher than everyone else because the referral's reputation is on the line vouching for you. People, anyone, anywhere between the age of eight and 80 is a potential uh, contact. I had some little kid in my yard. Uh, they were all playing basketball. And uh, he, we were talking about Michael Jordan. He says, oh, I know Michael Jordan. 
my dad and uncle take me up to see Michael all the time. We play basketball with him in the off season. Now, I ain't living in, uh, you know, some ritzy neighborhood, but here's a little kid that I didn't know, uh, knew Michael Jordan by first name. So you don't know who knows who. Okay, I'll, I'll address some questions at the end here. Uh, my football coach, John Gallardi from uh, St. John's University, winning his coach in college football. Uh, it'd be the summer, we'd have our double sessions and we'd already be ranked nationally. And we'd be talking about bowl games. He says, what are you talking about bowl games in November when it's August and we haven't played our first game for, you know, till September. Focus on the game next week. That's what you have to be concerned about. Then after you win that game, then you go to the next week. And then once you have successive wins, then you get to the bowl game. You can't jump from August to November with no wins. You have to do the work. And so what he always told us about winning was work intelligently now. Work intelligently now. Here's some resources for you. If you, uh, I like Ask the Head Hunter, if you can find his book or go to his website, he, every Tuesday he addresses questions from job seekers. It's all free, excellent. Job search magic, uh, last week I was talking about resume magic. Uh, job search magic, interview magic, they're all great books. Uh, what Calls Your Parachute by Richard Bowles. Go to jobhuntersbible.com, you'll find articles there. Working Identity is by Herminia Ibera. She talks about career change uh, and experimenting, like trying on shoes if you're thinking of doing something different. Here's a two hour job search by Steve Dalton. I put Bureau of Labor Statistics, Illinois WorkNet, Career Stop. Glassdoor had a very interesting little booklet on how to find a job. Very simple, um, and I put it down there so you can look at that. Uh, those of you who have counselors uh, that are with our program, if you copy down this code, RPA302, email it to your counselor. Uh, you fulfill the requirement by the program of maintaining monthly contact with your counselor. That's why we're offering this. Every workshop we give, we will have a code. These are for people who are already participating in the uh, WIOA grant program. We may be sending you to school or training, or you may be in the job search mode. So RPA, or for you military types, Romeo Papa Alpha 302. Uh, here's what's coming up. Next week on the 29th is how to find a federal job with Megan Straza. Uh, June 5th, I will be uh, doing survival guide for job search wilderness. Uh, I'll break down what the word survival means. Kathleen Gallagher uh, and Angela Smith will be talking about how to really work a room. Uh, Amy will also be sending out surveys. Uh, please fill those out because we want to, based on what your needs are, we will develop workshops. Uh, or talk or bring in subject matter experts to talk about what issues you have going on. And let me see here. The other thing is, let us know when you have a job. Uh, you know, we've had several uh, surveys talk about, let us know when others get jobs to encourage us. Um, It'll, one, it's gonna encourage others. Two, it allows us as an organization to serve more people because Congress is gonna keep the grant fu uh, program funded. So part of the requirement with our program is, uh, you know, maybe we spend $10,000 of your, you know, a tax their money to help you get your certifications. Well, in return, the only payment we ask is that you let us know when you get a job the type of job, the salary, are you receiving benefits? Uh, because Congress is looking about return on investment. And then we, 
I, you see, I, I like telling stories uh, of people uh, because it helps me illustrate points of real people out there uh, doing real things. Okay, so some of the questions that have come in, what do you suggest we place on our resumes uh, if we have gaps? Uh, COVID-19 layoffs, how do we address the gaps? Well, COVID-19, that, that's not even a discussion. I mean, no one's gonna hold your feet to the fire on that one. Um, but you do have to address gaps. You really don't have to address it on the resume unless it's huge. Uh, sometimes people take care, do elder care uh, for two or three years and get back into the market. Uh, there's varying opinions upon it. Some people say uh, functional resumes. However, those don't go well with applicant tracking systems. Networking works great, uh, but you do have to be able to talk about it in your uh, phone interviews and in the interview itself. You know, a lot of people take care of parents or kids or things like that. Uh, I wouldn't worry about COVID-19 right now because I think it's in the news enough. Uh, let's see. Does anyone else? Let's see what other questions we have here. Um, LinkedIn doesn't permit you to have two profiles. It's against the LinkedIn agreement. Is there anything else that you want, might want to talk about? Dun, dun, dun. Alrighty. Okay, so I'm gonna wrap it up here. And I really wanna encourage you to look at your assets, things you have done, look at your skill set. Uh, Do some self-assessment, figure out where you're going. And I'd like to end it with this story of uh, this uh, sign language interpreter uh, named Timothy. He uh, was sitting in the, the job search boot camp every day that I was teaching. And probably he was the only one in there listening to me because he had to, to translate for one of the job seekers. So he had applied to many positions and he was like, gosh, Jim's talking about applicant tracking systems, tailoring your resume, networking, LinkedIn. So he found a friend of his who was connected to a company, an employee assistance program company, uh, to one of the managers. Uh, so he calls his friend on the phone, uh, starts talking with his friend, uh, about this company they had been to grad school together. So while they're t while Timothy and his friend are talking, the friend is emailing this manager at this company uh, because he was a first level connection. While they're still talking, Timothy receives an email from this manager that he'd like him to come in for a face-to-face -face interview and uh, we're gonna bypass the phone interview based on your friend's recommendation. Whoa. So Timothy goes to LinkedIn, researches the company, finds out how much uh, they've grown in revenue, researches this uh, manager, sees what some of his accomplishes, accomplishments were, and also sees that this guy likes military history. So when Timothy goes in for the interview, they're making small talk. Uh, then he also talks about how much he knows about the company and how much uh, this manager has uh, grown revenue. The guy says, wow, how do you know all that? He says, well, it's kind of like war. You got to research the other side. And suddenly the manager was like, wow, I'm going to send you up to this vice president. Now, this is where you have to understand need and talk about how you're going to fit the need. So the vice president, she's like, looks at Timothy and says, well, I don't know how I'm going to use you. And Timothy uh, says, well, I, I read that you're going to Teladoc. And 
one of the things that I would uh, want to talk about and I want to ask you is, do you know how many deaf people are in Chicago? She says, I don't know. And he said, tens of thousands. I don't know. Let's just say 75,000. I don't know. And then he asked how many were in Illinois. And it was like 130,000. How many are in the United States? It was like millions. He says, think about this. I could be a little chat box doing sign language for all the deaf people, you know, that have hearing disabilities. Think of how much revenue we can generate and how much we can grow your business. He got hired. You know, so I, I throw this out to you, uh, just as these are real people who sat where you sat uh, and have tried different things that we talk about. So let me see, uh, would it, employers discriminate against you if you have a gap due to health problems? Well, for a lot of job search, it goes to the adult diaper, it depends. Uh, this is where networking really comes in. If you're returning to work, uh, you've had time off due to health problems or uh, child care, elder care, or you're switching careers totally, your best bet, your best route is going to be through people and not applicant tracking systems online. You want to be like water and go around the applicant tracking systems. Your friends will um, understand. They will talk you up in interviews or talk you up to the managers. Uh, it's best to go around the applicant tracking systems if you can. Uh, do you think online training provides any weight to companies for experience? I'll be honest, I don't know. Up until two, uh, two months ago, I would say no, but now everything's online. I mean, think of all the people that have kids in school, uh, all the e-learning with high school, colleges now. Uh, the world has changed. So I think the outlook on uh, online training is going to be uh, totally different. Uh, how do you get the training materials? Uh, Amy, you want to talk about that? Are you talking about the today's video? Yeah, it says, uh, how do you get the training materials? Sure. So after today's webinar, we're going to email everyone the a recording as well as all of the handouts. Thank you. Uh, where can I find the free class on Teams? I don't know what that means. The free classes are on our website, worknettopage.org. Teams is a Microsoft uh, specifically for our organization uh, where we can have video. It's like Zoom, but for Microsoft. Uh, returnship programs. Returnships are returning to work uh, moms although they're starting to expand into returning to work dads. And because moms have been laid off for 20 years uh, working in the, in the workplace, uh, what the companies are looking at, hey, we want you to get work experience, we'll have you come in. Um, and it's not returning back to a specific company, it's getting back into the workplace. Uh, so, you know, what do we have? We had someone at Northrop Grumman, and then I think she also worked at uh, Morningstar. So there's different companies that uh, want to take advantage of people who had skills uh, that have been out of the workplace and want to get back in and upgrade the skills. Uh, the difference between desired and expected survey, a nonprofit asks that they're on their application and answer was both required online. Oh, salary survey? Okay. Uh, again, the problem with online is you have to answer these type of questions. Uh, that's why I gave you some uh, websites to go with uh, salary. If you have not a lot of experience, 
uh, you'll be at the low end of the salary ranges. If you have a lot of experience, I would give a range uh, and things like that. Uh, my younger son, when he was interviewing, he knew roughly uh, in freight forwarding what the salaries were for his experience. And, you know, the HR person said to him, okay, you know, I'm going to ask what's your number. And he threw it back on her. He read some of my handouts and uh, he uh, tried to have her tell. She says, no, nope, I need a number from you. He says, well, based on what I've seen in the industry with my experience, I'm looking at a range between this and this. And she said, yeah, that's pretty much where we're at. But I want you to talk. Uh, let's see. And, and when you're talking about that, uh, I, I want you to think about what you're bringing to the company. Uh, again, my younger son was uh, doing summer work at this one company. Uh, knew nothing about freight forwarding. Uh, within a couple of weeks, he jumped in head first because I told him, volunteer, don't sit on your hands, learn the system. Uh, he wound up training new salespeople coming in. Uh, within, I think it was his third summer, he went to the manager and was asking for a raise from 12 bucks an hour. And he said, well, I'm going to ask for 1575 or something. So he goes into the branch manager. And I told him, I said, don't go in asking for a raise. Talk first about everything you have done. So... He goes about, he says, I've done this, I've helped this, I've organized this, I've generated sales in this, I've reorganized this, and I've been able to track down lost. He went through the whole laundry list. So uh, <laughs> the branch manager says to him, so what, what number are you looking at? And my son goes, 1575. And the manager shook his head and says, nope, I'm looking at 19. Whoa. And he says, I could see you run in the office someday. You know, so when, when you go into the, some of the salary stuff, uh, when they ask you for salary info in the interview, talk about what you bring to the table. How have you been successful in the past? How have you helped companies in the past? And then here's the salary I'm looking for. Uh, let's see. Uh, what about adding a Linda certification to your LinkedIn profile? Sure. Uh, and how may I register for your Tuesday workshop? Uh, again, go to our uh, website, WorkNetDo page. Uh, there, WorkNetDoPage.org, and you can sign up on the uh, layoff to launch workshop. Amy, do you have anything more on that that you'd like to talk about? Um, no, I, I think we just encourage everyone, this could be an opportunity, you know, after a layoff to take advantage of a number of different training programs. Um, so I just invite everyone and encourage you to attend to learn more. Okay. Uh, someone's talking about career change here. 32, you've had a career change once. I have 24 credits of a Master of Science. I don't know in what. Is it wise to change my career again? I don't know. Uh, I went through four or five careers in a, a 10 year period, getting out of the army, being a civilian for the military, insurance, working for unemployment, recruiting, job training. Um, it, you know, it depends on you. Uh, why are you going for this master's of science program? There has to be some reason why you did that. I remember going for a master's in counseling uh, but the whole time when I had to justify why, I was talking about how much I like being a trainer. And that was kind of an eye-opener for me, you know. So you really have to ask yourself some hard questions. What do you want to go into? Uh, and, you know, I've had, uh, I had some knee surgery done. And I was talking with the x-ray tech. And it turned out she had been in the supply chain, logistics uh, field for a long time. And she's like, I got tired of the stress. So I went back to school. She was in her 40s. Uh, went back to become an x-ray tech. 
And next thing you know, she's taking x-rays of my niece. So you have to decide why you want to switch careers. Uh, there's, there's nothing absolute. Uh, you can do whatever you want, but you just have to understand what are you willing to sacrifice to switch careers. And the other thing is if you are, if you made a career change, you know, it's like, I, I go back to Herminia Ibera working identity. You don't buy the pair of shoes in the window of the shoe store, if they still have them. Um, you want to try them on, you know, a size eight that's in the shoe store window is not going to fit my size 14 foot. So I have to, you know, and I tried on different occupations to see what worked. And this is why I liked what Cause Your Parachute is because I looked at the theme, remember I talked about the thread, that everything that I enjoyed doing had to do with working with people, helping people. Even as far back as high school when a friend's mother says, oh, you'd be great in social work. I was like, well, I'm going in the military. You see, but there's threads and that's what you want to look for is what are the threads? What have people talked to you about? What are moments of flow? What are those moments of inspiration where you're like, oh, I can't believe they're paying me to do this? Or a moment of, wow, this is what I was meant to do at this time. I can't be any more specific than that. Uh, Julius, uh, you have to do the assessment. And if you do cr switch careers again, uh, again, networking is going to, uh, probably 90% is gonna be 90% uh, is talking to people on uh, finding positions. Is there anything else you'd like to talk about? Okay, does anyone have any suggestions on to contact IDS? I have over 87 attempts at all times of day since 3.30. Oh my gosh, only get recordings on a busy signal. Uh, I don't know, I guess it depends on what you're looking for with them. There's unemployment issues and job link issues. So, uh, no, there's nothing other than the uh, number. Melanie, you, that my email is up there, Jim Fergal at worknetdupage.org. Uh, shoot me an email uh, about more specifics about your program. Okay, and let's see. Okay, thanks for the. Okay, everybody. Uh, it doesn't look like there's anything else that we need to talk about. So at this time, I'm going to end the meeting. Uh, again, next Friday will be uh, how to find a federal job with Megan Straza. Okay, thank you, everyone. Thanks, Jim. Okay.